in this video we'll look at the second challenge from Flare 2019 uh, competition which was called Overlong. Uh, we'll start looking at this in uh, Ghidra and then uh, we'll use uh, debugging to actually find out what's going on and uh, find the flag. So let's start with uh, opening it in Ghidra. I already did some kind of pre-analysis when I was doing this challenge, so there will be some names uh, applied to the, um, to the code, but I will try to explain uh, as much as uh, yeah, possible. Uh, so let's just uh, jump into the entry point and actually uh, we'll use this decompiler view. Uh, the entry is very small. It's actually it's uh, allocating some buffer on the stack. Then the buffer is actually passed to a function, which I already know it's called decode. There's some static, uh, static data which being passed, which looks like it might be an um, encrypted flag. There's a uh, yeah, bunch of bytes that uh, look that could be some kind of encrypted. Uh, and there's also like one C uh, in hexadecimal passed to the same method. And we get some value back. And after that, we uh, put a zero byte at the end of the buffer. Uh, and we'll display a message box with, uh, with our buffer uh, passed as a text. Uh, there's some uh, header info, which will be output. And uh, yeah, some uh, values as uh, mm, parameters, I guess we could also convert, not convert, but set equal. Uh, we could assign MB, well, that would be uh, it's MB okay, I guess, uh, the zero value. So as I, as I said, it's fairly simple. We could uh, try looking into the decode method, which also not that um, long. Uh, by analyzing, we can see there's like a while uh, and there's like a, mm, the, the third parameter that was passed. It's actually length of the uh, iteration. So we iterate as many characters as this parameter is uh, provided, we pass it the uh, the buffers we pass to another function and we just iterate. So basically we uh, go one by one, one by one character from the buffer, we do something with it and we move to the next one. And we can also go here and in here it actually looks like some kind of uh, algorithm that deals with the data. And one uh, approach could be to actually understand it and try to uh, simulate the same in Python. But uh, we can do something else. We can actually use the application to see how it behaves and maybe the application will actually give us uh, the flag. Uh, so let's just uh, for a moment close Ghidra and let's try to see our virtual machine where I'm have the, the program I can run. Uh, so let's just run it again. Let's just move to user code. And we have the same code as we saw just in a moment ago in, in Ghidra. So there's this one C that's being uh, pushed. We have this uh, value, uh, which if we follow in dump, we'll see there's like a, uh, those data being encrypted and we have a buffer uh, in EAX where I guess the data will be decrypted. So this is like for now it's just empty. And uh, we can just step over and we have something decoded actually. Uh, and if we run this application further, we get the message box with our uh, string. I never broke the encoding, but there's like a missing something here. There is no flag. There's just like a semicolon or actually a colon uh, and we would expect something um, here to be uh, to be more. So let's just uh, try uh, one more time. This time we will just go into the method, uh, the first one, and we'll see what's actually going on here. Uh, 
So we'll load something to ECX and we'll compare ECX with this 1C. And 1C is, if we remember, that was the value that we passed as a third uh, parameter. And it's actually, uh, you can see it here, it's plus 10, so it will be third um, argument. And if we, it will be uh, above or equal, we'll jump somewhere, but it's not because it was zero. So we will uh, get the uh, second uh, argument and first, and we'll push those to this method that we uh, knew that actually does the uh, encryption. Let's call it like that. It might not be encryption, we don't know. It's some kind of uh, byte manip manipulation. It does something. And as I said, we could try to understand this, uh, but it's maybe not very complex, but maybe we don't have to do it. Uh, so right now we are um, again to the, the first level method. And now we'll just uh, move to the second byte, but we can see that actually uh, there is some kind of uh, I being decoded here. And let's see, uh, it's being uh, saved here. And we move to the next uh, argument, next uh, character. Again, now we load to ECX, it's one because we already process one character. It's still not greater than one C. So we'll do that again. So in EDX, I guess we have the, the buffer. No, that's the encrypted. So I guess the decoded must be here. Yes, so we have this I and we process the second argument. We got the space. Okay, we can just move a little bit more times. We have N and if we do it a couple more, more times, E, V. So we are actually decoding, uh, decoding some characters. So actually we confirmed that this method actually decodes the data that we saw in, in Ghidra. And there was more, in, uh, more characters than actually uh, those that we got decoded. Because again, if we if we see here, we only get this one C characters. Actually, if we uh, count how many characters we decoded, it's uh, maybe not very visible, but here it says one C. So actually we can assume, and in a moment we can confirm that or, or reject the, the theory, that we actually, this method will decode as many characters as the third uh, parameter. So let's just try to, to see that. So one more time, we restart. We go to user code and after this push, we'll just modify this value. So let's just write something bigger. So uh, 3C, so 20 hexadecimal characters more. And let's just uh, execute. And we see we got more, more characters decoded and actually we can see this looks like some kind of flag because we have this, uh, well, we don't know if it's a flag, but it might be a flag. It has a uh, add sign and flare, which should be in every flag, but it's still not enough. Uh, those characters, we have additional underscore, which makes the flag quite long. So we need even more than three C characters. So one more try, jump to user code. Let's just execute. We have this one C on the stack. Let's just modify it. So three C was not, not enough. So maybe like, uh, I don't know, 60 hexadecimal. Uh, I don't know if it will be uh, enough, but yeah, it looks like it is enough. So we got the, the full flag. The program didn't crash. So I guess it will, it knows where to stop and um, we are getting a flag uh, for this overlong challenge. So it's this I am the encoding at flare on .com. So that's the flag for the second challenge overlong. It's, I think it was even easier than the first one. Uh, there's not much actually we need to understand just run the, well, 
we do need to understand a little bit that uh, running the application and just modifying one parameter will give us the the whole flag so that's all i hope you like it uh, if there's any questions something i need to explain a little bit more uh, just let me know in the comments and just hit the like button and subscribe and see you next time in solving the third challenge from flare on competition 2019 bye